Jabba Wonka. Good sound, good video, makes for the best thing. Yeah, might as, I mean, you get one chance to get it in there. I did a thing with uh, Carradine, Robert Carradine, the actor, mm-hmm. and we did one. He wanted I because I'm used to doing these like on Zoom, you know. So I, uh, I, um, uh, but he we did he wanted to do it in person because we're we were staying right next to each other, and Old but school. there was an echo that happened, and um. I figured the echo, and it was a great interview. We redid the interview, but it was like uh, the really? echo was yeah. crazy. And you can't get rid of it once it's in there, if it's on. No, because it was from, we're, hey. we're like 10 feet across from each other. So it was kept on, it wasn't just, it wasn't a technical thing. It was also the, <laughs> our the voice going room. to each other's mics. Oh, there you go. So, all right. Well, we're going to do this. Hey, Art. this is Darren Hall. Welcome to Brett's with Friends episode 44 44 wow four four that's my address four four gore so that's weird really cool. well, don't tell everybody where you live well you didn't get the rest <laughs> of it there's a lot of four four gores and anyways come see me it's co- you know co- we're get- i got my shots i've had my shots we're good i got my shot uh two days ago yesterday was a shit show what was yours like uh you know the first one uh, hurt a little bit it, it was fine it was easy uh i did it at a college it was just like a community pop-up thing they're like we have 800 doses that are gonna go bad let's get it on so i i showed up <laughs> and they they popped me and it was good to go so you did the which one did you do a pfizer i did the johnson and johnson the one shop dropped. you're the j and j well you're the one that nobody's ever have you seen the meme have you seen that meme video of the guy <laughs> having every conversation so you you break the mold you're the johnson and johnson nobody's ever met <laughs> everyone's freaking out like six six people had a blood clot and it's like shut the whole thing down uh i just want to do the one shot i'm not organized to, to pace out two weeks ahead of me I feel you. my follow-up is and you know it was one of those things they just hand you a card and it has a date on it and you're like okay they cut you loose i'm looking at it it's like a number for the cdc i'm like i feel like that's probably a little pick few pay grades above where i'm calling if i need yeah. help for my my shot at smith college uh, <laughs> And then they hit me with an email this morning. It's like to the wire, guys, right to the wire. So um, Sunday, Sunday is number two. I did you. I I think you're gonna have. You're gonna feel probably what I felt yesterday. Yeah. What was that? I was sluggish. Uh huh. Slept and took showers all day. I painted. I wanted to get up and do things. Showers all day. Was that like an a thing, or did you have like the you know the smell? That when you get, you know what, what's that? I forget what that's called. The For keto. When you're dead? No, no, no. You know, you know, like when you, when you go on a real long one and it's like that three days, like almost like you're sweating the drug smell, the no. keto acetosis. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. No, I, didn't ha- I, didn't, I know what you're talking about, but I didn't have it. But I usually do besides life. No, I, um, I, I just sweated a lot years. and I had the shivers and I kept on uh, sluggish and tired. But I didn't eat. Oh. It was good for losing weight. Hey, I eat all day. You go. I'm. I just hit a 34. I'm down from a 36. Dropping that dad weight finally. Hey, good. Oh, did you get the belly? A little bit. Yeah, you know the sympathy belly thing and good food and and then COVID sitting at home. I cook and I cook rich, man. Put it in butter and grill it up and little. Oh so, yeah, asparagus, yeah. garlic yeah. and garlic salt and butter and asparagus. All but anything. Just load it in butter and fry it. And it's delicious um is butter and salt bad for you i I, you know it's like eggs you know it's bad it's good it's whatever don't go overboard right that's what they say yeah i don't know it tastes good it's it's good it's good for my mental health so what's your (laughs) what's your favorite thing to make oh man um right now i'm i'm so my brother got me a sous vide one of those anova sous vides um, and I didn't use it for like a year. And then I decided, you know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do it. Um, cause I didn't want to go out and grill. It was raining and it was so dank. It was what so is a sous vide. A sous vide. It's, you know, it's like a water bath cooking. So you put a little thing in there and it brings the temperature of the water up to the exact temperature you want. So like if I'm cooking a steak medium rare, 
I set that sucker to 131, and then I'm going to bring it up probably four degrees in the pan when I'm basting at the end in butter. You can let it sit. The beauty of it, because I got kids, timing different dishes, timing stuff is a beast. With a sous vide, 45 minutes to four hours is kind of your window, and you just take it out. The entire thing is perfectly cooked to temperature, and then you just sear the outside. So it's kind of like cooking it in reverse. You cook it, and then you sear it. Um, so I can just toss you know, whatever steak, strip steak, T-bone, whatever I'm feeling right in the, right in the bag, let it sit, get all the sides ready, everything going. And then right at the very end, you just baste it in butter, a little bit of herb, boom, done. Nice. Perfect. So keeping it simple. It's, I guess. Uh, that's good because you have kids. So you have to manage the time of things being made. I, I made a chicken. I did an organic chicken on the barbecue grill, but I marinated it overnight in this Malibu dry rub stuff. Huh? It said marinate it overnight, and then I cracked it into the, you know, where it was flayed. You spatch spatchcocked it. That's the way you spatchcocked spatch that. Not to brag, but. <laughs> Not to brag, but that I her twice. <laughs> <laughs> and I, pan I watched this tutorial on YouTube where it was like, um, uh, this older gentleman was making it, you know, he doesn't do YouTube videos, but he did it like he showed how to do it old style. His wife had the camera. And so I followed his directions and he said, pan seared it on full, full flames, uh, for six to 10 yeah. minutes and then flip it and do the same thing and then turn it down to 250, which is basically turning off two of the burners and right. letting it do that for like an hour, maybe an hour, 20, maybe hour 10 okay. depends. Um, but I, that was the best chicken I've ever had in my entire life. See, the old, they know the way. And it's funny, you can just watch a YouTube video on anything. Now we're all instant experts. It's just like, yeah, no, I watched a video <laughs> one time and now I can do that. Mm. That's good. This is my first COVID cut. Hey, this is hey, the 10 sharp, minute dude. YouTube you tutorial video. Good hair. Welcome. I thought I've ne I'm almost 37 and I've never cut my hair before. I thought, why, you know, why miss that opportunity? To cut well, your own hair, not even as a you kid. Good you hair cut your hair as a kid. You can't so waste that. <laughs> do it for us. Oh, do yeah. it for the guys that can't yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah. Put your right, money maker right there. Let it furl. Screw the talent. That's it's right. all about the, the hair. <laughs> hey. So wait, let's wrong. let's talk about your um, let's talk about you growing up in a musical family. Um, uh, if you want to well, talk about like uh your father or something like how. What was it like growing up with uh, in a, a musical family that was popping and still well, is like omnipresent in today's uh, music stratosphere? So, I mean, I didn't. You'd have to ask a child who was raised by their musical <laughs> family. I, I was in Duluth, Minnesota, holding it down just like a regular dude, regular kid. I didn't even meet my dad until I was an adult. Oh, wow. It was literally, uh, I flipped over, I flipped over a CD and looked at the production company and then emailed the production company and got a number for another woman that ran a fan club that gave me another number to a dude. And then I talked to that dude and then I showed up at a concert in LA and was like, what's up? What's up? And what was his reaction? Yeah. So, I mean, it was like that, uh, you know, hi, <laughs> like, you know, it's, it was what it was, uh, you know, I don't know what you say to somebody you haven't known in however long. <laughs> it's did like, you, you know, it was, it was you, cool. We, out, we did some stuff. I'm sorry. Did, continue. Uh, I'm sorry. No, oh, it's wait, good. Oh, you just, your, your audio cut out. Sorry. Continue. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, there's nothing to interrupt. Like I said, the, uh, you know, the amount of time we've had, if you took my life as um, a whole from my birth until now, and we laid it over this conversation, the amount of time we've already talked about, my dad is like the amount of time I've spent with him. So there's not too much to say, um, you know, yeah, other totally. than he's a human and I'm a human and we <laughs> hung out and now we don't hang out. Um, the... Uh... But when did you know you had a knack for music? Oh, I mean, early on, I guess I, I took I took P Suzuki piano when I was like nice. uh, three years old or four years old. And uh, I remember liking it. And then I guess I, I my mom tells me like I just refused one day to go to lessons. And I like I don't remember that. But it, that tracks that sounds like me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, I believe you. And then I didn't do piano. And then, you know, I've always been musical. You know how kids are? Even my kids are like, that. you put on a song, you want to sing it, you want to dance around. Um, I started playing violin 
when I was in like fifth grade, partially just because the school offered it. And it was like a cool thing you could do twice a week and not be in regular class. You like got to go to like violin class. I was like, that's cool. And how old um, were you when this was I, happening? This must've been fifth grade. So, you know, well, how old are fifth graders? I don't know. I could add up to, from mine. Keep, I don't know, nine, 10 I don't years know, old. I don't even know what kids are. And, <laughs> yeah, I know. They're like, they're, you know, they're, they're just vaguely this age. And then they're, you know, they're bigger. Um, so I played violin and then I played guitar. I was, I went to church when I was a kid. I was a very good church kid um, for a while. And then I was, not, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, assemblies of God, Pentecostal. So if you know the um, running up and down the aisles, speaking in tongues, waving their hands in the air, falling oh, over the whole the whole deal you remember in the 90s like that revival and it was like christians but we're cool like god rock and we got tattoos <laughs> like crown of thorn check out the back of the power team rip a phone book it was like it yeah, was like that white strike thing <laughs> oh don't even get me start yeah and all those skillet oh my god skillet jars of clay the cro dc talk all these crossovers oh so my oh, yeah. my musical childhood was dominated by this um i don't know this doppelganger music it was like a parody of top 40 like you didn't get smells like teen spirit you got jesus freak which if you've ever heard the song jesus freak by dc talk is like a direct rip on smells like teen spirit but it's like the christian version so like i didn't know and like so many things so like then all of a sudden i wasn't anymore i had my you know spiritual unawakening would you call it what do you call it when you become an atheist after being a christian i suppose i i unspiritualized and then like i jumped into musical pop culture um i'd say pretty late in the game so i like don't know anything all these foundational things that people talk about that are like oh man and this and i grew up with it like i missed all of it i'm like did you do amy grant was <laughs> so like not like nothing i don't know so i'm i you know i find my way but I don't know anything musically. People are like, you know this guy, you know that guy, you must know everything. And I'm like, I know nothing. It's good though. I, I, you know what I like? Okay, hey, I'm a. The, I'm sorry. The, yeah, same tabula rasa. I'm a blank slate. I just said I'm a blank slate. I hear something and I'm like, that's good or that's not good. Like, you said that's not good. That's like the some of that's a formative thing that started the post punk genre. I'm like, well, I don't know what it did, but I wasn't there. Yeah. And hearing it now, uh, I don't know. Or maybe it's amazing, you know. That's it's all music. It's all great music is everywhere. So. Yeah, I I like sometimes when you're taking a trip down, a, you're doing a road trip or something like that. There'll be like that song that comes on. You go, I never heard this song before, man. It's really good. Super. The vocals are really what the who the hell is? Then all of a sudden they'll like put in Jesus is your savior. And like, oh god, they had they got me. They, they got me for a you. second. They got flicking through the looking through the christian stuff or like i wouldn't know stuff so like every once in a while a christian band would like cover a not christian thing you know like some classic song and i'd have no idea so like someone would be like man blah 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 and i'd be like yeah have you ever heard this fields of gold song by this techno group dba and they're like what the fuck are you talking about it's like i didn't know that, that was just things i didn't know that i just heard it from like some cover so that was just like me constantly with like musical egg on my face all the time well, what kind of music are you listening to these days it was great. Like you're, 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 you're Hold, on. Family, that, that band. Hold on, you're cutting what? out there. It might um, be my Wi-Fi. Hold on for a second. Now, are you there now? Talk. I'm here. Am I here now? You're here. Um, okay, I could have like turned my head too. It's a pretty directional. Like I don't have an well, Omni, I, an old SM58. I'm also like uh, in the back of this mountain, so. I see that you're. This is like you're a sherp up, and you're up in the mountains somewhere. Yes. <laughs> you're having a spiritual. This is Brett's spiritual journey. We're just popping in to say hi. Well, it's Checking a really nice Brett. place to be at right now. Yeah, it looks nice. It's it's sunny, Massachusetts, man. I miss Los Angeles so bad. It is up the mountain. Oh, that's a oh, and you're in Tio, you say? Yeah. I love it. I spent some time in West Hills and Thousand. I had a friend and when I was a video game tester in another life. Uh, the the office was in Thousand Oaks, so we. It's cool. It's a little, you know, it's secluded. I want to do some traveling soon. I'm getting a little antsy. Yeah. Um, well, if, if things are opening back up, I hear Iceland says, "If you got your shots, come on over. You can get ridiculously cheap flights to Iceland right now." How much? Like three hundred bucks round trip to Iceland. Really. Yep. I do like they the ladies. Really want I like you the to come. Icelandic uh, lady. 
the, that I hear the they like you as well. My understanding, and this could just be like one of those urban legends that they tell travelers to lure us in, you know, like Icelandic sirens on the on the rocks, and we're gonna crash our ships and <laughs> loot us. I don't know what they're doing out there, but they say because they're um, we're gonna this we're just get real anthropological here for a minute. Their breeding stock is pretty thin, so they want to welcome new blood. They're like, oh. come on, bring bring people. There's like only like you know 50 of us. We're Svensons and Bjornsons and Yarnsons, and like we need we need some we need some other places to come on in here and drop drop off some material for us well i'll i'll if you gotta I'll stay i pretty soon you just gotta go and have fun for a couple weeks. i think yeah. i'm too old to have babies right now well I you don't I need to have, that's I, that's the point i don't know that they want you to keep them i think they want to raise them in the ways of like the oh, small you're exactly you're just dropping off the, it's like here you go i picked up some stuff i left some stuff there should be good, we get some go. good stuff in there for you yeah who knows? You could you could sire the next Bjork. That would be wild. I'd love to have kids. I mean, I used, I was raised to think that I was gonna be have like two point five kids and be married by the time I was twenty five. Oh, but I, as I got like I got to like 20, age twenty two or twenty one or twenty two, I was like, because I, I have art, you know. It was like so, you know, all my stuff I was working out, I was working out through my art, you know, emotionally or dramatically or whatever. And I didn't really, as I got, I like every these these ten or these five or ten year links of time would pass and i was like oh i, I actually have a quick i had because I, <laughs> I never thought i could afford children really because i was raised in a broken home and stuff like that so i didn't really and all the ptsd from just being a child sure. in my house. Yeah, like that, but, right and everybody has the idea of the way that it needs to be to be right and i get it you you want to shoot for the you know you know, set goal well i i was doing a job in marina del rey at this guy's house and his wife was there and they're millionaires and I was doing this installation of a, of a, of a thing in their house and we're alone with her and our, I'm just, I'm getting organized and I see her daughter on the, um, on the porch overlooking the ocean. Right. And, uh, and she, the, door, the glass door is closed and, um, and she's like, Oh, you have kids. Uh, you got a wife. I said, no, no wife, no kids. And she's all, she, and she goes, how old are you? I was probably like, I think I was like 40 at the time. And um, and she looks at her kid out the window, gorgeous, you know, twenty-one-year-old woman, and uh, and uh, you know, it's like a picture out of a movie. And she's uh, she looks back at me and she's like, "Don't do it, don't do it." And so, but what are you talking about? Don't you got a you got a beautiful home? You're millionaires. She goes, "You're lucky. Don't do it. It's not worth it." And I was like, "Oh, you crush it, my dream," you know. So I think I lost. Joke. I could not think of a greater joy in my life than my children. So I think that might just be her. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to sure funny story Some people don't need to have kids. I think some people, as you said, fall into the, I'm supposed to have this. Certainly if you're, you're wealthy, you know, you need to have your, your heirs, right. That are, you can send that that's your life by proxy, right? Because your life ended, you were a beautiful star. Like, okay, put yourself in this woman's position. I'm going to make a ton of assumptions. She's, you said she was rich and beautiful. So she was probably raised rich and beautiful. And those are the things that she finds worth in herself. And then those are fleeting though, right? Beauty is fleeting. We know that we're artists. We know all about the, the fleeting nature of beauty yeah. and the ugliness that yeah. you know, lies right under the paint. So, you know, what do you do? You have some kids, hopefully, that are better than you, and, and you can put them through all the things and you know, join a polo club and do the thing. And I guess oh. maybe you find out after a few years, well, you don't want to take it back. I mean, I have a cat, and I've had that cat for 14 years. I'm like, shit, you know, I love that cat, but glad she's 14. You know, I, I like, want to have nice furniture again. <laughs> so, Aww. so I get, oh, yeah. she's a sweetheart, Cali cat. She was an old, she's a Venice OG too. She was up and down the cuts of Venice. Have you checked out any scenes in Venice lately? Have you seen what's happening over there? I mean, you know, I'm still, I think I'm subscribed to Venice 311, you know, because you got to be, you know, even when you leave the area, you got to get the alerts where the crazies are at, what's going on. And, you know, I got some ties. I still talk to Haz. Um, I still talk to, you How's know, Hazard doing? I, I get, you know, he's got that new band. What was it? He went through a couple. He's still Ginger Merchant. Merchant. It was like the Overnight Failures, which I thought was a great name. And now it's him and I forget the guy's name. They're, they're still doing some stuff. Hazard's still Hazard, man. I got to talk to him. There's the canary in the coal mine. There's the fucking canary in the coal mine. When Hazard leaves Venice, it's time to go. Oh, shit. That's right. Yeah. I think that's the final. That's the final sign. 
Yeah, well, we had Sponto. I think no, it was all I remember changed when Sponto died. When Sponto died, he kind of, it kind of like was a, it was kind of like 2008, I think it was, mm -hmm. or something That's like that. That's when we and, did the uh, gallery. That was the Spontification gallery. That was right at that time. He died, and I, we, like, I missed it by three months. I, I, I think I'd been in there before, and I had no idea where I was. You know, one of those things. Yeah, we oh. hung out. We hung out. It was, uh, and I remember, uh, yeah, he visited me over this. I didn't even know he knew where I lived, and we, I rolled him the big joint. And he was talking to me about like uh, moving or staying or getting a place down there or in Malibu or something like that. And I was all, dude, you can leave and this place that you can come back. You can, you don't have to be stuck uh -huh. in Venice. And, well, look, uh, then you, why did you tell him when you did it? I don't know. Because Venice like, changed. You know, I remember it was the, and you were around for it too. It was when, to me, the real nail in the coffin was, you remember when all the guys on the not beach side got together the little business meeting and they're like nobody can sell you remember that bullshit law firm what was it it was anything that had a use you couldn't sell anything and they were trying to target they you know they sell those kit rings from india and like fucking hacky sacks yeah from tchotchkes Jamaica. from downtown tchotchkes from downtown and they didn't want the competition from the dudes sitting on the, the blankets weaving up jewelry and, and like making stuff so then they passed that law and they said you can't make anything that you can use like a ring is you can use that and it was basically like all you could do now was photographs and painting art that's it because because brad as you know paintings have no use that, that, that yeah. no no use for a painting no, no. uh so dumb and then i just remember like it, then everything on both sides was tchotchkes and all the artists left and we made that last little gas bid i think everybody with the art crawl and the pop-ups and like let's get these guys in places yeah you guys had a gallery we tried to and the, the whole point of that gallery was like all you get like everyone from venice all you beach people that got displaced like hang it up on the wall let's try to sell it i remember one time uh, a homeless guy came in asking for money and I said, well, I'm broke too. I don't have any money, but I have wall space. And he said, well, I'm not an artist. I said, well, you can make something. You, there's Sharpies over there. I got painting. We had supplies just out on tables. I was like, make something. So he drew up a couple. I mean, there were bum signs. They were just some funny bum signs. And uh, he hung a couple. I said, I'll hang two of them. And I hung them up and some kid came in. He wanted to buy it. And he's like, I was like, of all the paintings, sure. 35 bucks took the 35 took my commission because i said we got to keep the lights on and i gave the guy a 20 dollar bill it was like two days later i went and found him and he was just like you couldn't believe it he's like what what i was like yeah man like that's what that's what we're about here let's 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 do more we, of that shit we'll want commerce and art okay we'll give them commerce and art um but yeah it was not to be rent was brutal and uh bank of venice always had that spot it was always supposed to be bank of venice's spot they were just working on that liquor license yeah so yeah. The days were numbered, and we weren't making any money. I remember Jose used to come down, Darren, Darren, I need to wet my beak. Do you have my money? Darren, I, <laughs> Darren and Steve, I need my money, Darren. You know, you must know Jose. Out and around. That's fucking funny. Yeah, so good. Yeah, he things was like the galleries he don't last, man. Song. No, it wasn't. And we were in the death spot. We were in the spot that used to be the coffee bean and tea leaf. I'm like, is Bank still there? I don't even know, because that place for years. Yeah, I could, think it's still there. It, I don't know. Then they overcame the curse because what was after us was the stand-up paddle place that was alive for like five minutes. That is a cursed place. It I is. remember the. Do you remember the spaghetti place, the, the pizza place that was in there? You mean the cocaine? Wait, you're gonna that also sold pizza. You're breaking. You're breaking <laughs> you that if you need to. <laughs> wait, repeat, repeat that again because you broke up there, and I'm gonna try to get closer. Uh, repeat what you just said again. I asked if you were talking about the cocaine front that also sold pizza. Oh, was that what's happening? Because the pizza was yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. I asked him if I could get Alfredo with uh, like a side of Alfredo. They're all no. I said yeah, you don't no. have. Can you, he's all. We have to heat it up. Yeah, exactly. They're not. They're not in the business of cooking pizzas unless you're ordering a pizza to put something inside of it. Are you kidding me? You can't actually get food there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was good. It was you cheap. get a panini once in a while. No, they were great. Hi, those guys. Hey. <laughs> it was it was let me tell you it was a fun place to own an art gallery and live like be next door to <laughs> a lot of a lot of good parties good catering fun times so what's coming up for you uh in your musical can you do you want to play we've been looking at this uh -huh. keyboard. do you want to play something well i mean it's not it's, it's just what i'm doing now you know covid hit i have these guitars up here and they're largely ornamental now um this is this was the greatest irony of having children and being like so excited to be like they're gonna be musical kids and i'm gonna teach them stuff and but like i don't know if you know this about kids but they decide what they want to learn from you 
and they decide what they don't want to learn from you or think they already know better than you. And that's just pretty much it. So <laughs> my daughter loves playing keyboard and she loves singing and she doesn't love learning about those things, which is fine in her development process. But part of it is they used to yell at me when I play music. So my daughter, it was so cute. I used to sing her songs um, and my own music, like certainly back in the day, was reflective and, you know, acoustic -y, singer songwritery is a little sad, you know, it just was. And she used to cry, just as even as a little infant, whenever I'd get up into like a real emotional part of one of my songs, she, she'd cry. And we have, you know, videos of this because we thought it was funny. And, uh, you know, I, I may have even purposely made her cry a couple of times with really sad sounding songs because, yeah, you know, I'd torture her a little bit. It was funny. You got to get some videos. Um, but the upshot is I like stop playing my guitar because I'd pick that thing up and the kids would be like, no, no play it or they'd request like the same i make up silly songs for them sometimes and they'd request the same silly song over and over if i play anything else they get mad at me so i could only play at night and you know kids free time what happens so mm -hmm. i kind of stopped playing music weirdly and then covid hit and i got this thing it's on this computer i'll maybe hold it up to the main camera it's like this thing it's like 16 pads and then from that, it kind of like I got this other little mixer and this other thing. And I, you know, for the longest time, I thought that I could be some old school guitar on his back, singer songwriter guy that doesn't know shit about shit. Plug me in, make me sound good. And I'm going to sit down and, you know, tug at your heartstrings or whatever. And yeah. I had this really, you know, as because I'm also technically proficient, I do IT stuff and I fix computers and shit. But I had this like purposeful and willful ignorance um, as to anything music production. I didn't know gear, you know, and I also I grew up, I didn't have any money. So I didn't have any money for gear growing up. I didn't have guitar pedals and a ton of stuff and a rack and thing, you know, music gear. Shit, man, you know what music gear costs. You pick up a little thing and it's like, that's 450 bucks for a little thing that hooks that other thing to that. And all it does is make the sound warmer, <laughs> whatever that means. Like, yo, that dude sounds warm to me. Sure burned a hole in my pocketbook. Pretty warm. Uh, so, uh, you know, the problem with that is you find yourself reliant on other people and you have to communicate what you hear in your head to them so that they can execute the part uh, you know, of what they do, which in my case was literally everything other than sing and play. Uh, and it, you know, in various incarnations, it had some success, but ultimately I don't think for the kind of person that I am, I can't run it through a filter of my mouth to your ears, to your brain, to your fingers, to your execution. It just needs to come from me. And this has been my gateway into music production. The fact that it makes and records sounds in real time and I can do stuff. I'm, you know, I've been doing it for about 10 months now, but it has opened doors as far as my knowledge of sound mixing and engineering and design and composition and putting things together. And I'm not saying I'm great at it or anything, but it's fun to do. And I have a natural, like, I've always like, do you ever like stand in the shower and like drum on yourself? You no, know, I've got no rhythm. Table? No, no rhythm, I've nothing. Got, I mean, okay. not, I got, I mean, I, I think I held a note once, but okay. no one else was around. It was like I'm a little 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 same little. octave, but no, I'm, I'm all visual. But I do like good music. But I can't. I don't have the coordination. Uh, visual, which, yeah, which I, 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 I understand. People think that art is must be universal. Like, oh, you're, you're, you must do all of it. Like, I get, it. I draw stick figures, dude. Like, I, I, my daughter can draw better than I can, and she's five. Yeah, uh, I'm, not, I'm not even being facetious. I mean, like, legitimately, that girl can draw better than I can. If we played Pictionary, you'd have a much better shot. If she could read the <laughs> word, she'd be better at drawing it than I could. Uh, so it, it, it does not track. I get it. Um. Hey, play. Can you play us something on your? I will. I'll do something. I this something. Yeah, this is. I'm learning how to do this kind of stuff. So, like, hey, I let's, just let's learn. Let's watch you learn. Yeah, we're gonna learn. We're gonna learn how to do this. So you get a little baseline, right? And we get. We let's get. A, let's see. I gotta get my little starship deck up here. So you traded your guitar for the uh, in, and you're going to this. Yep, traded in my guitar for this beat machine thing. So I, <laughs> you know, you just kind of. I love it. You start by laying down a thing. I usually start with a bass line or a beat, but in this case, I can just go like. And now that's in, and I can start it. So now I've got my bass line. Can you hear that all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds great. 
great. Perfect. And then we can throw in just a little beat. fun to play and I can just like build ideas in a second and it's like any genre I want to do I can do like I was trying to do like a rocky thing and like I've never been able to like solo guitar I play guitar but I like play chords and stuff I've never been able to solo and like I can just get a full-on Nasty, nasty fun at this thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't, and I just sit down and just takes over. Like the, like I don't know what it is. I whatever feeling I'm feeling, you just scan through. I got a thousand sounds. Something will just click, and I'll hear a tone, and I'll just start vamping something, and I'll hit record, and then I'll start vamping something else. If I hear, like I was listening to the Mandalorian soundtrack the other day, I'm like, man, that's. Uh, and then I pulled in the thing, and I took the hook, and I chopped it, and I made it a little faster, and I started playing beats over that, and I sent it to my brother, and he had a laugh, and I'm like, this is this is so much more fun than just an acoustic guitar. For now, I get it, but this is my new toy. Like I Damn. just, yeah, it's it's super fun. Damn, that was fun. That was a, that was a Brett's with friends exclusive. Yeah, right there. Mother. Never heard before. <laughs> any other human ears composition for, for that. <laughs> 
There you go. <laughs> um, gosh, well, I have got some little film projects that I need help with. Maybe you can take a look at, they're already shot. I'm learning. So I'm like, I'm totally, it's like, how do you start with this? And it's exactly that. So yeah, you got something and you want something behind it. You can literally just toss me some ideas. I my sound i have everything i have every sound okay, i'm gonna send you I something i'm gonna say i have this little film i have a couple little things but there's one called uh the agenda that i was okay. never really satisfied with i like the edit but i don't like the soundtrack and Ooh. i want to redo some of the graphics on it but um it's like an abstract movie that we made with uh sarah scott she's uh she was an a actress I knew, but uh, I like mm -hmm. it. So we made it as like improvisational filmmaking, okay. but, uh, but anyways, it was, I'll maybe I'll, yeah. I'll give you a painting. I'll trade you a painting for it or something. That, I have a, and I love that. I love art and I, I, I don't have a red Buffalo. I don't think, I don't think what? I have a, I don't have a Brett Woods. I never took Fuck. one. I had one at the gallery and I think you took them back. And then I never, <laughs> I would, you know, cause you know how it goes, man. You gotta make that money. <laughs> So I had a few and you're like, oh, you're click, give me that. And I was like, it's oh, I know those are like, uh, they're like hotcakes. They're hotcakes. I know, like, I know. Like, but, I, you know, I, I could, I, I, I will give you a buffalo. And I will proudly display it on my wall. Uh, my, my, my wall needs good art. And I'm pretty selective with the art that I put up. That I got some buffaloes over here. I love it. I love it. And I'll do a thing. I even got a new plug-in pack <laughs> called Kinetic Treats. So, like, if you need any of that, you know, music, go, 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 you know that stuff that's like metal sounds and like the thumping you know the stuff that goes underneath like yeah yeah the, 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 yeah just the like the little things like the tense moments oh, I cool. have well, you, uh, it's organic so whatever you want to do with it i have an idea based on anyways i'll send it to you but yes. um i'd love to start working on something with this deal yeah you're do you ever uh remember uh, the band tangerine dream mm -hmm. they did the soundtrack for like legend with that the Tom Cruise movie and uh, yeah, that amazing hurry, amazing. Oh. Hey, Mia Sarah's in that. Oh yeah, yeah. What a throwback. Mia Sarah. Uh, Mia Sarah still looks great today. Mia, if you're out there, I'd love to have you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, come on, lovely. In. She was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yep, yep. She was the the love interest, right? Yep, <laughs> she was the, mm. for, for <laughs> my love interest for the next ten years. God, mm -hmm. she was such a crush. I think you and probably quite a few other <laughs> other boys. Phoebe Cates, Phoebe Cates, Phoebe Cates, and I, you know, I I had a big crush on Phoebe Cates even when I was li when I was little, um, and I remember looking her up, and she like married some hedge fund dude or some dude what? with no, money. She's married to Kevin Klein. Oh, was it Kevin? Oh, that's right. It was Kevin Klein. But didn't she like drop out? Of, it was like she did two movies or three movies. She did that one where she was a princess, Princess Caribou or whatever, and then she was done. It was like that's well, it. Married I married Kevin Klein. Klein. Yeah, I married Kevin Klein. I was somebody rich. Yeah, yeah, Kevin Klein. He's like, oh, it's okay. We can come with me now. Yeah, but <laughs> you also be like, yeah, but can I still like do my own projects and stuff? He's like, there's one project now. It's Kevin Klein. <laughs> <laughs> well, she every film she's been in, like there is Paradise Lost, which was huh? filmed on her 18th birthday or something like that. Her nude scene in that. And I think her father saw it and gave it the okay. And she's like, she did this interview with Letterman and she's all like, yeah, now yeah. it's weirder. She's yeah. completely comfortable in her body. She's like, she knew, she's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew what was happening. Yeah, I liked it. Hmm. That's wild. Well, you know, I guess. I think... Oh, you're cutting out there They're for a second. They're still together. So great holidays. They just have stayed together this whole time. Oh yeah. I just know. said I, I think when I read when when I did when I did my Wikipedia looking through for Phoebe Cates, because as one does, uh, you know, I, I think they're, they're still together. So I I was just saying it was a Hollywood love story for the ages. <laughs> cheers, cheers to Phoebe to, Cates. To 30 more years for Kevin, yeah, Kevin and Phoebe. Well, um have we been on for an hour? I, I forgot and I uh, what's your what how long yeah. have we been on for? Well, it's 5.20 and we were right on. So we've been on for about 50 minutes and we probably had a little technical difficulty. I think I signed on at 4.34 because I remember checking the email at 4.34. So we've been on for about uh, 50 minutes with okay. the technical front. Perfect. So we got about uh, five minutes and we'll wrap it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a thing Do you, for you? I, do, I don't know if you have it. Do you have like one of those things you do with all your guests? Maybe you need to have some regular thing. You got like some crossfire questions or something. I ask everybody this. Oh God. The thing, well, your favorite I, think I just got, you know, I, I was asking everybody, I was asking, what's my go-to question? What's my go-to yeah. question? 
Um, my go-to well, there was one about the NFTs, but the uh, Tan Tan Tonto, the guest I just had on. A, a, I'm doing two shows today. You're my second one. Okay. And uh, Tanto just answered the NFT question, which oh, was, he just put it to bed. He just put it to bed forever. Oh, I mean, do you have a Threat killer from? Threat okay, this, killer. okay. Well, he got something here. Put um, um, from this is our question. That's only this is the only question that we've always we've had on the show by an audience member. So okay. this this question is by Steve and Julie from Simi Valley, California. What okay. are your uh, thoughts on NFTs? Uh, you'll, what, what's an NFT? That's my first thought. Okay, so scrap that. <laughs> and then I'll, I know that, 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 that question already got answered the last show. That's why I was like, <laughs> well, they couldn't have answered what my thoughts were on it, but I, but I love it. I love that somebody had such good thoughts on it that you were like, we don't need to ask anyone else. <laughs> that opinion is definitive. Book it, stick it on the Wikipedia, and call it a day. Let's find another problem. In fact, get that guy back on. Do we have anything else? We got some other shit we can just take care of real quick. <laughs> just want well, to that, we, tried, we talked about the homeless problem, but that was a that's a that's doesn't get answered that quickly. Well, no, I was gonna say you can't open with uh, you end with that. It's like, hey, oh, we with thirty seconds, real quick, homeless. What do we do? The whole thing, it's a problem, right? What's... We opened with the homeless. We closed with the NFT. Yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I got opinions on shit, but uh, you know. They're, they're rarely brief. <laughs> you got too many qualifiers required. I do. What was the other question? I do have a question. Um, uh, what was it like uh, going on the road with uh, Lucas Nelson? That was rad. I mean, it was just one show. It was a one-off in, in Colorado. Uh, he was on tour. I was in Colorado. Um, already. And it was just kind of like a, let's bump out. Let's do a thing. Boop, boop. He was rad. It was like, a, I guess you're bringing this whole show in a circle. If you wanted to ask somebody what it was like growing up in a musical family, you should see if you can get Duke Lucas Nelson to do your podcast and he'll tell you all about it. That I boy Luke. is what happens. Well, that's what happens when your musical father who has, uh, you know, access to opportunity actually, uh, you know, fathers and parents you uh lucas was amazing and you know we rode on the bus that his, his dad's like here use the tour bus and he's got the gear and he's got the people and he's got you know played with everybody grew up learning from this guy went on the road when he was eight and learned you know how to play slide from this dude everybody and like he was amazing he's a prodigy he's so to earth you know and and that's a testament to somebody that you can come up amid greatness and amid uh, wealth and opportunity and not let it go to your head. So whatever Willie did, Willie doing it right. Shout out to Willie Nelson for, for being a stand-up dude. Um, and Lucas for, uh, you know, taking, taking it the right way. Uh, what was the Lucas, size of the audience you played for when you're over there playing with them? I think it was like 1200 people or something. It was, it was pretty big. It was one of the bigger audiences I've played for, I have to say. Um, and for just being a pop-up show, you know, and they were so, I got to say, Grand Junction, shout out to Grand Junction, Colorado. Everybody there was so welcoming. It was like immediately like you're in the family. And I'll, I'll toss this out. No one will get it. But if someone from Grand Junction, fucking Dio, uh, he was like our de facto kind of roadie guy that was like, you know, the gopher that needs to, you need something, you know, run to the store for you, whatever. It was fucking Dio. It, you like, get it in a pinch. What does it does it come in a sack? Does it where does it go? It doesn't matter. I'll get it for you. Have fun with it. So this really great people would absolutely go. In fact, they I think I got invited. They were doing another festival, and the guy that put on that show invited me out again. But it was I had just had my second kid. I was starting a new job. I'd moved out here. It was just like not in the cards. But I would bet if I go and do a show, like a real show somewhere again, not just like a sneak, like sometimes I'll just go to a coffee shop. I'm like, man, people are like, you're really good. You should do shows. And I'm like, oh, another life. Another uh, but I would probably, I would do a show there. I would, I, that could be my big coming back show in Grand Junction, Colorado. Do you want to play live again soon? Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I, I'm just, I want to, I need to get my stuff out there. I think what I want to do is, is get, chop myself up here again you see i'm doing what i'm doing i need to record my first album uh i have songs that i wrote when i was 20 17 years ago i have songs that i wrote you know right before i had kids when i was still you know i i channel when i write i i've always tried to write with intention you know what i can write with an intention i can write like i won't call it schlock because it's not schlock but like 
concept stuff. Ginger, because that's why I don't call it schlock. Ginger Merkin. Ginger Merkin shit, I just write it. Because it's like a joke. You're like, okay, there's going to be a bar fight. Let's do a thing about a bar fight. Right? There's a guy, and you just sit down and you do it because it's like concept and it's like I, there's no emotional investment. No, yes, this is me, but this isn't like Darren, his deep emotional core. This is like me being like, I'm a cowboy. Let's drink some fucking whiskey and like get our dick sucked. So, like, you know, we just write that music and it just comes out and it was amazing and we'd rock out and have fun. But like my shit, I'm so like precious with it. It's so like in a box and in there mm. um, that it's almost like I have to keep it for myself and then I'll access it. I'll just like tap in there for some channeling session and then like three amazing songs will come out in three days and then I won't write for three more years. You know, it's like that's my process. It's incredibly difficult to, to be productive when you're like basically like I don't know I'm gonna get hit on the head and I'll write something good and then I don't know I'll do the right combination of dr the right cocktail will will hit me right there and something will spit out that's been in there for a while. Um, you uh you do mushrooms right? You have mushrooms in the past? Uh, I have. I am away from it. It's so persient. Brett, that you bring this up. So next weekend, the first, I'm going on a thing where it's nightmare weekend uh, with 17 other dudes in a cabin for four days. I have not done anything like this since before my, my first child was born. It's coming up on six years since I've had any kind of even tangential to what I would consider a real throwdown hoedown, you know, yeah, where yeah. like everybody brings 300 bucks and a fucking, you know, writes out their last will and you throw it into a pile and see what comes out the other end. Uh, and that's going to happen in f like five days. So All maybe right, we'll so have to do a follow-up episode in a month or two after I've processed whatever happens there. I might have some some new shit for you. I don't know. How long are you going to be out there for? Four days in, in the woods. Um, with, Where? In upstate New York, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, wow. It's going to be amazing. It's a giant cabin on 50 private acres with a private lake. It's it, it's going to be nice. and. I've seen the, the stuff people are bringing. I'm bringing probably a quarter pound of real good dank Cali weed. That's my contribution. Um, and there's going to be everything in it under the sun. And we're going to access our, our, ourselves. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to fish. I'm sure there is fishing. I don't have tackle. I don't have gear. And I've been thinking about it because there's a river. The Mill River is right outside of my house. And I see people down there all the time. My kids have been asking about it. They're about ready to, you know, stick some worms on some hooks. Those are that. <laughs> you know, maybe I'll go out to the go out to the cabin with a Snoopy pole and see what I can catch. Yeah, those those old I don't really poles. fish, but I watch people fish, and it's more wow. exciting because I don't want to kill anything. But oh. uh, and, but yeah, I eat miss. I love. Well, I'd eat it. I I wouldn't kill it just to kill it. I'd eat it or I'd throw it back. Um, yeah. I've dressed a fish. I'm from Minnesota, so you know, I've 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 dressed down a fish in my day. Ever mm. kill a deer? Huh? No, sure I shot I shot at a few and never hit one. Yeah, I'm not a killer. No, I mean not for lack of trying. Again, but I'd eat it. You know, it was with my grandpa, and that's what you do. You'd, you'd eat, you'd eat the deer. Yeah, string it up. No, right I don't get the whole like I'm gonna go to Africa and shoot thirty things and like you know make a hat out of it. I, that's never been me. Ugh. I know I can't handle. I met this guy who was um I was gonna maybe bartend at his party in uh someplace in Oregon, and he showed us this room where he shot a gazelle or something like that, and mm -hmm. then had it mounted in his office. And, uh, and I was, I got that weird feeling when I was around the house. I was like, you know, it's kind of, you know, I was like, what is this? And my friend brought me there for the gig to, to propose yeah. for a proposal right. uh, just to meet each other. And he had this gazelle head or some exotic, I don't know. It was like something beautiful, right. On the head on the wall. And it was like, mm -hmm. I, and he told me, oh yeah, I got this. I went hunting in a, in a reserve where they they sanction off these things they're all closed off so it's like where's the game they're all made the sh they're putting him in a fence yeah. to shoot i know hey ask bob about it next time you talk to him he went so one of the guys i worked for out here um organized and took people on african safaris uh and i mean you go into his house and literally every surface has something mounted Yikes. on everything i'm mean, going to the death it's a death cave um he's actually i own a shotgun um, I, me miss as if like, it's ridiculous, never owned a gun in my life, you know, shot guns with my grandpa, uh, you know, 20 years ago, uh, went to a random, like new England wildlife, uh, federation benefit dinner. And I, of course I won the rifle, the door raffle. Cause that's just my life. I didn't have a license. So he had to like take it, but I, I own like some wingmaster $600 crazy 
turkey shoot and shotgun that whenever I decide to get a gun license, I can have. <laughs> so that's, that's the thing. I know. Yeah. I want a shotgun. I don't know. Well, just sitting there. Hey, hope well, he uses it. Hey, yeah. can you, okay. We're going to wrap this up because I don't want to cut yeah. anything out. So no, um, uh, this is like, do you want to play us out? Oh, but like shit. also tell us how people can find you and your, um, <laughs> And uh, Instagram or social or your websites Ooh. or your things. I'm a zennial. I'm a zennial who picks and chooses, um, you know, the the types of media that I engage with because I came up on both sides. So I don't Insta. I don't tweet. I'm not a twat. I don't have an anything. I don't. Ha I have a Facebook, but uh, you know, the only reason I got your message, I never would have seen it. I was on Facebook Marketplace looking for gear. That's my my interaction with social media is to get on I Facebook was Marketplace. <laughs> yeah, and you hit no, the little green thing popped on. I do go on Reddit, uh, but I will absolutely not tell you <laughs> where to find me on Reddit because that's the whole fucking point. Perfect. You'll just, find us. You'll find I'm, us. Yeah, I'll, so I'll find you. I can just say what I want to say without fear of. Um, you know, having to toe the line. Yeah. You, you know the line. Um, yeah, let me pull up my my machine here and give myself something nice in the background. What, what do you, you want to play? Yeah, get, uh, play us out. Give us a minute and we'll play out. And Sure. I'm just going to pull up some. Oh, here Or two go. minutes, whatever. I'll try to, I just don't want to edit too much. No, this is because good. I want to keep the, I want to keep all this conversation. It's no problem at all. I'm just going to start hitting some, some pretty little piano chords here. Let's just do something. One more. No, is that it? Yeah, that, that can be it. No, it's it, I didn't pre-balance the bass before I came on. I wasn't planning on singing it. <laughs> so when the well, bass is on, it maxes it out. But hey, you got a little play out. You can edit in something from that. It was sexy, right? It was sexy. It was sexy. Yeah. Well, That's hey, fun. let's let's just get we'll, we'll talk about the, the the film projects. We'll talk about the stuff. I love what you're doing. Thanks for coming on the show. It's <laughs> fucking awesome. And um, I'll send you a link to this when it's done. I, I have to. I might go camping this weekend, so maybe I'll have it edited by. I usually edit these things the same day, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But um, but hey, man, that was like awesome. That. Yeah, it was rad. This is uh, it was a lot of fun. I, I've never done a podcast before, so yeehaw. Man, there's another Brett's with Fred's exclusive. Another first <laughs> time you pop my podcast cherry. Well, that's what I'm here to do. There you so, go. I'm well, doing you, God's you, work. You're nice and gentle, and we had a drink, so you know, I was a little loose. Yeah, I know. Cheers, cheers, yeah. cheers. There you go. Clinky, clinky. Clink, 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 clink. But um, yeah, man, let's talk in the future. I'll I'll send you if you want to. If I guess, do you need to send me an MP3 of anything because we just kind of covered it with your life stuff? Okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, that was you episode uh, 44 of Brett's with Friends, Mister Darren Hall, in the house. Mm, yeah. Yay! Have a great day, man. Thank you so much. All right. Cheers. All right. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Ancha. Ancha.
Okay. Right. Yay. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Anytime. Awesome. Awesome. Right, cheers. See ya. I love it. I was clicked the thing and it was the wrong button. That's how you close it. Oh. You got the second, you got the keyboards on there too. Yeah. Well, that was episode 43, 44 of Breath with Friends. This is Darren Hall. I'll see you guys in the future. Cheers. Jabberwonka. Always tell me. Never going to end. Everyone. Let's do it again. Oh, 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 oh,